Hey y'all, what's going on? I'm here for Black and Crew New I mean New York Lord. Black and Crew Chicago um season three, episode three. Um, one of my subscribers, you know, said that this show is starting to become like Black Ink Crew, uh, New York, and I do agree because these motherfuckers are starting to tap dance on my last nerve, okay? So, um, we started off at the shop, you know, um, somebody is fixing the window that, you know, Van, uh, broke the night before, Ryan comes in, you know, Ryan, he comes in, he already knows, you know, what happened because Junior told him, Four, he's still, I guess, trying to be like the voice of reasoning or whatever um, with this whole Ryan and Van situation. You know, um, he's saying every action has a reaction. And, you know, uh, Ryan changed the lock. So, therefore, you know, Van did what he did and everything. And I'm like, okay, but that doesn't give Van the right to do um, what the fuck he did. Like, you know what I'm saying? You're mad because you couldn't get into the shop. So then, so therefore you're going to sit up here and, you know, uh, break the damn window and better be glad that Ryan didn't, you know, call the police on your ass for breaking and entering. Like, you know what I'm saying? Especially because you already have a record on you. So, um, you know, anyways, he's also, you know, four is also saying that Ryan is not being a great boss right now and all this other stuff. I'm like, no. He's just not letting y'all motherfuckers do what the fuck y'all want to do no more. That's why y'all mad. That's what it is, okay? So, um, anyways, which it should have been like that from Jump Street, but, you know, whatever. So, you know, um, Ryan is pretty much like that van is not welcomed in the shop or whatever. And, you know, he should have came to him, you know, if he felt some type of way um, about the locks being changed instead of doing what the fuck he did or whatever. And, you know, he's going to take Junior with him, you know, to Philly for a couple of days for, you know, this tattoo convention because he feel like Junior is the only one who really has his back right about now. So, you know, um... Charmaine, you know, she puts it out there that she's having like this 70s party at the skating rink for her birthday or whatever. And, you know, um, Van, he's not going to be able to make it, which is probably the best since it's, you know, so much tension right now between him and Ryan, you know, but he's not going to be there because his daughter has a basketball game. Cool. Whatever. So, um, then we have Don and Ashley. They uh, go to church, and um, after the service, they go talk to the pastor. Um, the pastor is asking, you know, like, uh, who has the anger or whatever. And, you know, Don says, you know, we both have, you know, anger issues and everything. And Ashley, Ashley she's like, you know, well, his is worse or whatever. And, you know, um, Don has said something. I, I don't know what he said, but it was something in regards to um, Ashley's anger because then they started showing flashbacks of um, every time she pops off on him or you know whoever and you know she's like that you know she just pretty much reacts off of what he does and everything but she said her last straw with him was at the anniversary party and you know he went off on her and I'm just like Ashley you seem to really not comprehend that that situation was your fault because you were trying to start shit with Charmaine and her dude like you know what I'm saying you sticking your nose in some shit where it don't belong and you know it, like really girl you know what I'm saying that once again I did say that you know I felt like Don probably did you know turn up a little bit too much on that situation but I understood his anger at the same time because that was some bullshit that you was doing you know so um anyways um Don doesn't want to be angry and he feels like you know um a lot of situations you know that he encountered growing up um is the reason why his the the you know, his life is the way it is right now because of his reactions. You know what I'm saying? Um, Don doesn't consider himself a Christian, and Ashley, she just seemed like she was so devastated behind it. And I'm like, this is a conversation that you're supposed to have with somebody way before you married them, and probably before you had kids with them too, because you know, um, when it comes, you know. When two people have, like, two different uh, views on religion or whatever, um, you know, it can, like, break a relationship. You know what I'm saying? Although, I mean, y'all got a whole bunch of other issues and y'all shit. But, um, you know, um, 
that can, you know, break a relationship. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes when people don't share the same uh, religious views or whatever, you know, but um, Ashley, she even admitted that, you know, they never had this conversation or whatever. Um, you know, they uh, prayed with the pastor and everything. Um, Don also lets us know that growing up, you know, um, he wasn't like uh, exposed to like the Bible and, you know, um, you know, praying and all that other stuff or whatever. So um, he's going to keep an open mind to, you know, uh, being a Christian or whatever, you know, for Ashley and everything. So um, next we're at Charmaine's party. Um, you know, everybody's having a good time and everything. And I was looking at Charmaine's outfit and I'm like, I don't know if that, is that 70s, y'all? Y'all let me know if it is, you know, if what she had on is considered 70s and yeah, because I was just like, that don't really, but okay. Um, so Danielle shows up. You know, because she wasn't going to miss her cousin's uh, birthday, despite the fact that her and Ryan are having their issues. Charmaine tells her from Jump Street, listen, Danielle, don't come here on that bullshit with that nine mad drama or whatever. Let's just all have a good time. So, you know, um, they're all sitting down or whatever. Ryan, he kind of walks up, walks in on their conversation or whatever. You know, uh, Charmaine was kind of, I mean, not Charmaine, Danielle was kind of shading uh, Ryan and uh, Junior or whatever before they had walked up and everything. So, you know, Danielle, she's like, you know, hi, Ryan or whatever. Like, um, you seem to be having fun despite the fact that, you know, your shop is falling apart and all this other stuff. And I'm just like, didn't Charmaine just tell you not to come in with this nightmag bullshit? You want to do it any fucking way? Like, you couldn't just respect your cousin in that sense for her birthday not to start some bullshit? Oh, my God. If I was Charmaine, I would have popped off on her. I'm sorry. But anyways, you know, so, um... Danielle doesn't know why, you know, Cat got everybody's tongue all of a sudden because everybody has been complaining about Ryan and they show, you know, a playback of, you know, her being on FaceTime with Charmaine and Four or whatever, you know, of them complaining about Ryan and all this other stuff. And, you know, she's like, you know, your village ain't fucking with you or whatever, but I'm the only one who got the balls to say it to your face and this, that, and the third and, you know, um... He was saying how, you know, it's his shop or whatever and everything. And, you know, um, Danielle's like, but it's not just your shop. Danielle. Once again, Ryan's name is on the lease. Like, I really, I just really um, have a hard, real hard time comprehending or really understanding the fact that y'all don't comprehend and understand that um, this is his shop. And that his name is on the lease. Okay. Um, you know, so they're pretty much, you know, just going back and forth, going back and forth. Charmaine is trying to dispute the issue, but Ryan is over it and he leaves, which is probably the best thing. Like, I, I'm starting to realize I don't think I really like Danielle too much. She always come off like a motherfucking hater, you know, and just always whiny you know what i mean like yeah I, i'm starting to kind of realize i don't really like danielle too much so anyways we have uh four you know um he he's performing at this club or whatever and you know it's all sold out and everything he has nikki and don with um him there as well um after the performance some girl comes up to him you know um And she's asking him, um, I'm sorry, y'all, I kind of got sidetracked, but, um, she's asking him, like, you know, about a tattoo and everything, and, you know, she claims that she's his cousin. Nikki, she's peeping this, you know, um, from wherever she's standing at or whatever, and we all know that Nikki is very jealous and everything, but I kind of understood where she was coming from in this situation, because this girl's saying that she his cousin or whatever, and I ain't really believe her. <laughs> I was suspicious like Nikki I'm looking like 
you know, the way that she was just kind of talking to four and stuff like that. I'm like, yeah, I don't know about this whole cousin thing. You know, so Nikki, she Nikki, she walks up or whatever. And, you know, she's telling Nikki the same thing, that she's his cousin. And, you know, she claims she's his cousin on his dad's side. We know that four didn't really have a relationship with his father or whatever, you know, before he passed. Um... And she claims that she's been following for on like Instagram or whatever for a long time. Nikki is not buying it. You know, she wants to see some Dana. Okay. And uh, like I said, I don't, you know, in this particular situation, I, I, I feel where she was coming from, you know, because yeah, it, it seemed very suspicious. So, um, we're at the Philly convention or whatever. Um, C's from Black Ink, New York. He's there and everything. And on his little uh um poster or whatever you want to call it, he had uh <laughs> he had black you know, he had all the black inks or whatever, you know, of course New York and then the shop he got there and down there in Atlanta and I think he got one in Miami or something like that. And then he had Chicago up there. And you know, Ryan like, hold on boy, you know Chicago is my shit. You know what I'm saying? And C's is like, I mean, yeah, but y'all associated with, you know, Ryan like, nah, dog, Chicago all me. Okay. <laughs> you know, um, but anyways, Cobra, she shows up. You guys remember Cobra from last season. Um, and Ryan and Junior, they're shocked. They, you know, they don't know if Cobra about ready to punch Ryan in the face or she coming in peace or whatever. So, you know, um, she sits down and everything. And, you know, she talks about how he was the only person that called her, you know, after her dad passed, you know, and everything. And she kind of gets emotional because it had just happened a month prior to, um, this convention and everything. And, you know, um... Ryan, of course, he can relate to losing somebody close to him because, you know, you know, his sister and stuff like that. And, um, you, you know, you guys know that I could relate to, you know, my grandfather passing earlier this year or whatever. So, you know, yeah, um, he gonna always, you know, he was like, he's always going to make sure that she's good regardless of whether he fired her or not and everything. And, um, they're cool at this point, you know, they bury the hatchet, um, she um was at the convention with some other people or whatever, but he tells her, you know, to set her stuff up, you know, over where he's at and everything. So, um, back at 9 Mag, Danielle, <sighs> Danielle, Danielle, Danielle shows up or whatever, talking about she's reclaiming what's hers and, you know, how she doesn't need Ryan to get her job back. She could just take her job back. And I'm just like, I'm just like, I, I just really, the, the way, the thought process on this show, like this shit definitely got to be like a turn up for the cameras or, you know, definitely scripted or something because I just refuse to believe that these motherfuckers really think like this. You really think you could take your motherfucking job back after the motherfucking owner fired your ass, Danielle? Like, really? Really? Okay. So anyways, that shit just, it just irritated me. So, you know, Next thing you know, Van shows up right behind her. I guess he's supposed to be like, you know, the muscle for her or whatever. Um, the new girl, I still don't know the new girl's name, y'all, that took Danielle's position. But, um, she's telling them, she's, you know, doing her job. Telling them, like, look, y'all can't be here. Ryan said y'all can't be here and, there, and everything. And, you know, um... Danielle's like, oh, I'm the receptionist or whatever. And, you know, Van is telling her that you have no authority or whatever to tell him that he can't be there. And, you know, if Ryan was a real man, he would have called him and told him that he didn't want him there and all this other stuff. Okay, Ryan could have called or whatever. But if this girl is telling you that Ryan said some shit and she's only trying to, you know, abide by what the fuck her boss is saying, why the fuck can't y'all respect that? Like, really? You know what I'm saying? Like, Van and Danielle was really pissing me the hell off. Um, and she's telling them, you know, I'm only doing my job. And, you know, um, Danielle is telling her that she's not an iMac. I hate when they do that shit, y'all. I, I, I hate when it's somebody new and then they tell them that they're not an iMac or whatever just because they're not an original. Like, fuck that. 
Okay, like, bitch, you wasn't doing your motherfucking job or whatever. So, well, I mean, that's not why you got fired. You know, you got fired because, you know, the way you came at Ryan, even though I understood, you know what I'm saying? It, you know, I understood you defending your man or whatever because that was like some bitch shit Ryan had did, you know, talking about the man a whole year later on social media and shit like that. But you came at him incorrectly, you know what I'm saying? But even still, you, he wasn't doing your damn job anyway when you was the damn receptionist. So, um, you know, um, where was I at, y'all? Um, oh, yeah, but that was the whole point I was trying to make, though, about them telling somebody that they ain't nine mag or whatever. So, anyways, um, you know, Charmaine is telling Danielle, like, come the fuck on. You're not the receptionist right now. And, you know, Ryan's not here and blase, blase. Like, you're directing your anger towards the wrong person or whatever. And, you know, um... The new girl and Danielle still going back and forth or whatever. And Danielle is sitting up here talking about, like, oh, you want to talk about being a professional, but you're wearing um kitten, e kitten ears or whatever because, you know, she had the little kitten ears on her head. And I'm like, what the fuck does that have to do with being a professional? Like, really? Da like, Danielle. Damn motherfucking yell. Like, you really need to cut the shit. So, you know, she's trying to kick the girl out and tell her to take out the trash or whatever. And, you know, old girl, she like, oh, I'll take out the trash, all right? And she spread that shit all up on the motherfucking floor. She was like, fuck this, deuces. So she quit. And I, I don't blame her because it's just a bunch of fucking foolishness. So, um, later on, well, I don't know if it was later on that day or whenever, you know, uh, the girl that, you know, was claiming that she was Forrest's cousin shows up or whatever to get a tattoo and everything. Don is kind of not buying the whole cousin thing either. You guys remember Don and uh, Four don't, you know, they don't have the same father. So, you know, um, yeah, he don't trust it either. You know, um, so she goes to the, to the back with Four. She's getting like this... Uh, family tree tattoo or whatever and she's explaining you know um how she knows that they're cousins and all this other stuff she saw a picture of his dad one day on you know Ford's instagram and stuff like that and she's like you know oh that's my cousin and you know i guess that's that's how she figured that Ford was her cousin or whatever like i'm still suspicious behind this shit but whatever so excuse me that was that we're back at the philly convention you know um Ryan gets like a video or something of, you know, Van and Danielle being in the shop or whatever. You know what I'm saying? And um, he's pissed off, but he was like, you know what? I'm going to deal with this shit when I get back to Chicago. You know what I'm saying? And um, he's asking Cobra, like, you know, um, would you like to come back and everything? And I do feel like Ryan kind of being petty a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't feel like he's as really asking her to come back because he really want her to come back. I feel like it's because he's, he, you know, it is because he's at odds with, you know, Van and shit like that. But, I mean, hey. Um, I felt like, you know, Co Cobra was uh, a little bit more, prof you know, she... Yeah, she was like a little bit more professional than uh, the rest of the motherfuckers was when she was up there last season. It's just that she was kind of doing a little bit too much. But, you know, um, she said that she had to think about it. You know what I'm saying? So, back in 9 Mac, Charmaine thinks just because she's the manager, she can make executive decisions by bringing motherfuckers back to the shop that, you know, Ryan said didn't need to be there. So, um, Ryan returns, you know, with Junior and Cobra. As soon as they see Cobra, it's automatic, you know, like, shade throwing, like, what the fuck is this bitch doing here? You know, Ryan is like, where's my, where's my receptionist at? Or whatever. And they, you know, they like, you know, oh, uh, we fired her or whatever. And they like, he like, who the fuck is y'all to be firing somebody? You know what I'm saying? Like, firing my motherfucking receptionist and all this other shit. Especially when I said Danielle ain't so you know ain't supposed to be here and I ain't rehired her motherfucking ass. You know what I'm saying? Um Charmaine is asking Cobra, do she got the money, you know, for her shades? You remember they got into it last year about those Ray bands that, you know, she think Cobra stole or whatever. I mean, I still don't know to this day whether Cobra stole the shit or not. I don't know. You know, you know what I mean? Um Charmaine 
No, Cobra is asking Charmaine, like, bitch, you want to fight? You know what I'm saying? So they start going back and forth and, you know, people trying to get it between them, holding them back. And Charmaine is like, uh, you begged your way back up in here. I said, no, actually, Ryan, um, asked her, does she want to come back? And, um, she told him she would think about it, but really that was a yes because she's there. You know what I'm saying? And, um... You know, they start going in about her weight or whatever. And it's like, who fucking cares? Like, is that the best y'all can come up with? Like, really? You know what I'm saying? So, you know, Danielle's, Danielle's sitting up here telling Charmaine, like, we don't do this ghetto-ass shit. We don't do this ghetto-ass shit. You know, her going back and forth with Cobra. And I'm like, Danielle, you motherfucking ghetto by sitting up here, you know what I'm saying, bogarting your way back into the motherfucking shop. And nobody told your ass you could come back. You know what I'm saying? And then Charmaine is the definition of ghetto. So, like, have you not seen seasons one through two and all the shit that your cousin has been doing that's been considered as ghetto and ratchet? Okay? <laughs> like, stop playing. You know? So, um, anyways, uh, next thing you know, um, when Cobra heard that shit, she was like, oh, really? Y'all don't do this ghetto ass shit? And the next thing you know, bing! Now, I don't know if she landed the hit or not. It was just too confusing. Um, it don't really look like nobody won that situation. I don't know. You know, uh, they break it up or whatever. Then Charmaine starts coming at Ryan. And, you know, um, everybody starts arguing. And then Cat shows up like, hey, guys! Ah! And all this other bullshit. And I'm just looking like, shut the fuck up, Cat. <laughs> Like, anybody trying to be motherfucking happy right now? It's too much going on. You coming up in here randomly with this bullshit. But, um, that pretty much was the episode, y'all. Um, you guys make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Make sure you guys come back. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out.